Hey everyone, welcome to episode 18 of Online Card Classes Crafty Chat. Today's guest is Kim Vander Sanden, the founder and owner of My Favorite Things. And we promise you, you are going to get some surprises during this episode. Hey everyone, welcome back to Online Card Classes Crafty Chat. My name is Lydia Fiedler, and I am the community manager of SplitCoastStampers.com, and I also blog my random thoughts at UnderstandBlue.com. We are here today with Christina Werner. Hey guys, Christina here. As far as intros go, <laughs> my name is Christina Werner. I blog at KWernerDesign.com, and I also started this lovely little website with my friend Jennifer called onlinecardclasses.com. Jennifer McGuire. And I'm that friend Jennifer. And um, you can find me at jennifermcguireinc.com. Our special guest today is someone I have known and loved and admired for a long time. She is the owner of your favorite things at my favorite things. So Kim, <laughs> tell us a little bit about yourself and where people can find my favorite things on the internet. Well, thank you very much for, for having me. I'm not even gonna pretend that I'm not like completely overwhelmed and, and uh, in the presence of stamping royalty. <laughs> I was talking to Jody earlier today and telling her, oh my gosh, I might just have to let them know I'm gonna geek out for a couple of minutes and then I'll be fine. Um, my favorite things is online at mftstamps.com and we just turned 10 and it's just been such a fun delightful amazing adventure and really mostly because of the people the people that i've met the people that i get to work with and all the friends and friendships that i've gotten to make over the years including all of you guys what's interesting about your company you hadn't actually been paper crafting that long when you started mft right so mft opened in 2006 Mm -hmm. And you had only been stamping for a couple years, is that right? Yeah, I had a friend in 2003 invite me to a Stampin' Up! party. I was um, about eight and a half months pregnant with Emma. And so I just, I couldn't even. At that point, I was with that <laughs> pregnancy where you just, you can't even. So I didn't go, but then I, I ordered a Knight of Navy stamp pad, ink pad, and and the all occasion stamp set i still have them <laughs> and uh then i got them in and i was like okay well i don't what am i going to do with this so of course that you know was a run to michael's for paper and colored pencils and a cards you know a paper trimmer and so then i probably had a good 140 bucks into it which at the time was you know quite a bit of money yeah that's and, big uh, money I know. And then I thought, well, think of the money I can save by making my own cards. And that was, you know, the beginning of the end. <laughs> think of all the money we've saved, y'all. Oh yeah. So what how did how did it begin? What was the what was the beginning like? My friend that had the Stampin' Up Party, Jamie, she and I had gone to like a local stamp fest and I think that was in two thousand five, like a convention with different vendors and stuff and We'd taken a bunch of classes during the day and we were sitting in the hallway waiting for the nighttime like sample frenzy, make and take frenzy, something like that. And we could hear in the back like all of the vendors, you know, setting up and all of the clamoring and we were kind of chatting and saying, you know, how cool would it be to be on the other side of that door so that you could see what was new before anybody else. And it was kind of in that moment that I decided I would open a little, a little online stamp store my thought initially was just to carry my favorite things, the products that I really liked playing with. And so that's what I did. I went to, <laughs> I registered my domain name first, of course. I went to Office Depot and bought like the $100 web in a box kit. <laughs> oh, and that was painful back then. Ooh. Oh yeah, it was, it was a stellar website. <laughs> it really was. <laughs> yeah, so that's how it started. And did you start, because I, I think I know this, did you start with Who's That Girl? Or what was your first? Was, who's That Girl? I was working at the time for what was then Clear Channel Media, which is now iHeartMedia. 
and I supported the director of engineering. And he kind of made a comment to me, well, why would anybody buy from your store versus another store? And I didn't really have a good answer. So I, that's when I decided I needed proprietary products. At the time, I carried Cat's Pajamas stamps in my store. So I contacted Alma and asked her if she would do some illustrating for me. She said she couldn't because she did her own line. I didn't quite get that at that point. <laughs> but she did turn me on to a website that had a lot of different artist portfolios. I don't think it's around anymore. But then I did a lot of searching, and that's where I found the artist behind the Who's That Girl line. And I saw the images, and I just fell in love and decided that's where I needed to start. And you still carry those, right? Well, we brought back Time for the Bubbly for our 10th anniversary. We kind of re revamped the image a little bit. We have a better eye <laughs> now than we did 10 years ago for, <laughs> for finding little glitches and stuff. But no, she kind of had a, a nice long lifespan, but you know, stamping trends change. And yep. so we kind of have had to adapt. It, it, was, it's, it was painful to make that decision. I bet. It was so iconic. Yes. Yeah. But you found a bunch of great designers along the way. So talk about how you chose those lines like Pure Innocence and some of those people, because you've always supported those illustrators and really kind of made those people super prominent in the industry. And that was fun to follow. That is really, I mean, there are lots of things about NFT that have brought me a lot of joy, but that is definitely one of them. I think that if memory serves, Heather Ellis, who's the illustrator behind Pure Innocence, um, I think Michelle Boyer kind of contacted Jody and I and said, you know, we, these images are super, super cute. And she had a digital stamp store. So we contacted her to see if she wanted to license to, to make actual physical stamps. Because I'm not, I don't, I, I mean, I have done digital stamps, but for me, it's just not easy. And it kind of takes away like that tactile mm -hmm. experience or something. So we have now been working with her for probably six or seven years. The other illustrator that, I mean, I love all of them, but the one that whose story to me is super meaningful is the illustrator behind the Bertie Brown line. She, I can't, I found her on... I think Etsy and contacted her about doing some illustration. She was working for another stamp company at the time. So she declined, but that stamp company went out of business. And when they did, she contacted me to see if we were interested again. And of course we were, but what has been so meaningful for me about that is her income because of the size of the company and the popularity of the images has I'm going to roughly guesstimate gone up 20 fold and wow. it's yeah. Like it has changed her whole life and it's like the coolest thing ever. I am so happy every month to send her those royalties because I know what a difference it's made for her and her family. So. Oh my gosh, Kim, awesome. that is amazing. It and she's so kind. She's so nice and so talented. Oh yes. She is amazing. And she's just a, she's a great design team member. She's a great illustrator. She's just as sweet and genuine as she could possibly be. And every month I'm like, I always wonder what's she going to do next? Cause she's going to run out of ideas at some point. And then she comes up with something that just blows me away. I'm just, I don't know how she does it. It's fun. I mean, she develops a lot of ideas. We feed her some ideas. We do all of the sentiments and stuff for them. But it's, she's just fun to collaborate with. She's so just easy to work with and just kind of gets it. And she thinks about things from a stamper's perspective, things, how things will work with other things, which is not as common as you would think because many illustrators aren't stampers. So it's kind of, it's cool to find somebody right. who kind of gets it. But that independence that you're talking about, changing the lives of those illustrators. And I think that that was, a pretty hard existence for a lot of people getting rewarding pay for for that kind of work and i i just admired that about you and watching you bring those people kind of up and give it legitimacy 
for many, many years. Because I think as stampers, and I've seen this, you've probably seen these same conversations, that as stampers, we think, oh, well, they're just having fun. You know, they're just drawing those little things as basically a hobby. And it wasn't considered something that you would have a legitimate career in. And you've given so many people fantastic, legitimate careers that way. I think it's part of the business that a lot of us don't think about. That's the part really that makes me the happiest though. I mean, you know, playing with cool stuff and getting to develop cool products is fun and rewarding in its own right. But really the difference that for me, that NFT has made in the 30 employees we have, all of the independent contractors we have, that's the stuff that really is, gets my heart. Mm -hmm. Yeah, me too. And that's a thing you're known for. So you should be proud of that. Thank you. And that's one of the things Christine and I like about online card classes is being able to have guests like pay people to do what they love. It's fantastic to be able to offer somebody that because um, not many people get to do what they love, get paid to do what they love. And man, that feels good. So I can only imagine how rewarding it is. It's a gift and to be able to pay that forward like you guys do with online car classes. I mean, you know, there's so many talented concept designers out there and it's, I mean, it's just cool to see the hobby be validated mm -hmm. and there's no more validation in any career than cash compensation. So that's amazing. And to be able to open doors for people who maybe just like um, stay at home mom and this is just an opportunity to feel empowered and, you know, add something else to their, some more fulfillment to their life. I think that's also, there's not many jobs that give you the opportunity to do that. So it's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. And all those little influences come together to just like legitimize all that work because as we all know, it's actually really a lot of work. <laughs> you know, it's just, it's nice to see that, that, that has, has changed and become more significant. I think when we talk to people about influences on the business, you know, you've been around for a long time, so it's not like you're a brand new company by any means, but a lot of times we talk to them about the influence of social media on their growth. But with you, you have always had an amazing design team and I wanted you to tell us and and to me that was like you created your own influences with that group of people you've you've had around you i wanted you to talk to people about what the design team has meant to mft um when i when mft started i had no clue what a concept designer was i'm not sure if she's still stamping but i was approached actually by carrie sarika way back in the day about doing some concept design work. And I, I literally had to ask her, well, I don't get it. Like, what do you mean? <laughs> like, I need to sell stamps. Why do you want me to give them to you? I don't, you know, like, I really <laughs> need to them. And it, I wasn't like being snarky. Like, I really didn't get it. And then she kind of explained it. And I thought, okay, well, that makes sense. And then at the time, Julie Ebersol was running the, the DD and she contacted me to, to send them some stamps. And then I kind of got it. And what kind of is funny about, well, not funny, but what is really cool about all of that is when I started MFT, my position at Clear Channel had been eliminated in November of, of 2005 or whatever, or no, I guess of 2006. And so I was in process of having the Who's That Girl line manufactured. And I thought, well, at that point, I was only working part time that I was shuttling Emma off to, you know, daycare and paying for gas and tolls and all that stuff. So I thought I'm going to give myself until March 1st to see if I can do something with this little online company. And I finally got the, the stamps, the packaged sellable product in kind of by the beginning to middle of February. I sent them out to the 12 that were on the Dirty Dozen design team at that point. And uh, Jean Streif was one of them. Yeah. And Jody actually was on the Dirty Dozen at that point too. And just like looked at the gallery multiple times a day, stalking it, you know, couldn't believe it. So about February 27th with my March 1st deadline looming ever so closely by, 
the first cards were loaded into the, into the gallery at Split Coast. And that day I started having orders. Wow. So by the time March 1st hit, which literally was, you know, that two or three days away, I had had maybe like a thousand dollars in sales. And it was just enough for me to say, I'm going to put off looking for work for just a little while longer. So after that, then Jean was one of our first real concept designers. I'm kind of excited and proud to say that we've had some, some real superstars on the team. Absolutely. Jen Del Nero was on the team. Taylor Van Bruggen was on the team. And they've obviously gone off and created their own little empires, which has been kind of cool. But we've had a ton of, of great designers. And the thing that I've liked about how we do it is we don't hold design team calls. I feel like that breeds some kind of competition or something. And I don't like that feeling because mm-hmm. then you're, you're selecting people. And then if you don't select someone, then maybe there's a feeling that they're not good enough. Or, and I, I don't know, it just makes me, I, I don't, it makes me uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. So we just scout out and find people that we, we love to see what they're doing with our images or just in general. And so if it excites and inspires us, then we generally ask them to guest and assuming all goes well, as soon as we have a place in the team, that's kind of how we cultivate new design team members. And you have a pretty big team. How many people are on your team? Um, I don't know the number but it's probably <laughs> 18 to 20. We do, we do. And it's, it probably is too big, but I don't know. I, I don't know. I love them all. You can it's never hard. have too much of a good thing. I know. <laughs> Thank you, Christina. I feel better now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you built a huge, incredibly loyal community at Split Coast and everywhere else that you've been through your challenges, you know, you were always super organized with challenges and, and I'm sure that helps when you're trying to spot those, those superstars, but how did you pull off that, that NFT brand loyalty and that community that, that you're so good at? I think really it's about, that part is not so much about me, but about the talent of the real NFT, the people that are at work there with those kinds of things. It was definitely Jody. I met her at an Arlington swap. I think you were there too, right? Yeah, I sure yeah. was. <laughs> and I, all I kept, I met her and I think I told her seven or eight times that day, it's so nice to meet you. Like there was, <laughs> it was almost like finding like somebody that you wanted to date, you know what I mean? But like, <laughs> and I just kept, oh, it's so nice to meet you. So yeah. she called me a few weeks later and asked to be on the team. And cause I had extended an offer while we were there. But Jody is, her nickname is Eagle Eye Mara, and she really is. She can spot anything, and she literally just kind of weaseled herself into a whole, well, now more than full-time job because she would say, you know, there's a line, and it extends, you know, an eighth of an inch past this. Is that intentional? Or Like, she would find that, those things. And so she is super, super organized. She's the one that is behind all of the organization of the sketches. And kind of as MFT has grown, we've been able to, to really find like the best, most talented people to pull in kind of behind the scene that really just keep things super organized on trend, like really just running the show. Nice to have that kind of staff in place that really just their heart and soul. I mean, they bleed, you know, pink and black and, that's that's what makes it all seem so effortless is the hard work of all of all of them combined kind of behind the scenes. Yeah, I remember when she moved out there with you. It doesn't get any more committed than that. That was a cool moment. It was. It was really cool. Um, her husband was a flight medic and he had been a flight medic long enough to have seen some things that you can't unsee. Um, one of which was they had been called to respond to a search and rescue scene for another flight medic crew that had crashed. Oh. And when they got there, it was not a search and rescue. And these were all people that he knew and had worked with in the past. Yeah. So it, 
I, it had taken quite a toll on him. And as we continued to grow and had moved into a larger building, we really had a need for like someone to be the director of operations, like in the warehouse and stuff. So I only met him for two or three minutes. We offered him the job and offered them to, to move to Florida. They lived in Alamogordo, New Mexico, which is probably the only city in the world that Eustace would be better than. <laughs> it's a very small town. <laughs> so, I've been there. I can testify. <laughs> yeah. So we knew that they were making a, a step in the right direction. And then we rented the house that at the time was, there was one house between us. Oh. So we were best friends and co-workers all. And so now Frank is still employed. All three of their kids work for us. And so it, it's, it's really, it could have been a real mess and it wasn't. How did they adjust to the humidity coming from Alamogordo? It just makes my hair frizz up thinking about it. I know. It was funny because Jody did not travel well because she was driving, you know, the kids and, and Frank was driving the furniture in a big truck and stuff. So they get to Louisiana, they pull off for gas. She calls me and she's like, we can't, we can't breathe. The humidity. And like quickly I'm on my phone Googling, what is the climate in Louisiana versus Florida? Well, it's exactly the same. And I'm like, oh crap. <laughs> and I'm like, uh, <laughs> like I didn't know what to say. So I just didn't say anything. And I hoped, I hoped to God they'd adjust quickly. So oh, yeah, they did. Tell us about your brick and mortar adventures. We started off with a little store in a neighboring city called Tavares. It was a total of 800 square feet. And then within a year, we had outgrown that. And then we moved to downtown Eustace in one office space that was 1,600 square feet. So we thought for sure we were set for forever. Well, then we outgrew that, and then the next 1,600 square foot space became available, so we took that one over. And then the next on the other side, 1,600 square foot became available, we took that over. And then we kind of started looking downtown to buy our own building. And so now we have 9,000 square feet downstairs and 7,000 upstairs, but the upstairs part is, there's a dance studio and then we have six apartments. At some point in the next year, we'll take over the dance studio area. We're going to put an elevator into the building so we can get up there. But I think right now we're okay for space. But that has been kind of a, a fun venture because it's allowed people to take classes. We have an annual retreat there every year that's kind of become a legacy program. We don't really send out open invites. Generally, the people from the first retreat or a handful of others always come back. And, you know, I think so much of stamping has moved to online, but there's such validity and such a need for local stamp stores. And, you know, it, it's kind of heartbreaking. Um, it is for me, for sure. You know, see, because, you know, online you can't go try a tool or you – and even with online card classes, which thank God you guys are there because where else are you going to learn different techniques? Yep. You know, that's what those local stores really bring to the table. And it, it, it's very sad. But, you know, having said that, I, I get it. I mean, if we only had our retail store, I mean, there's no way, even as a manufacturer manufacturing our own products, there's no way it could exist on its own. So we're super fortunate that we're not in that position but you know i feel like there's a big local stamp stores are community resources mm -hmm. for our our hobby so i'm glad that we're able to kind of provide one i can't even imagine what state my house would be in and the living creatures in it if i had an mft store nearby i don't think <laughs> i would ever be here you can come and live above the store in one of our apartments. Yes, that sounds good. <laughs> so does all of your business take place in that building now? Did you move everything there? Yeah. Yep. And you just take in, you know, people can just come anytime, right? So if they're yep. in Eustace, they can come see you. Yep. And shop. Yep. How amazing. I'm jealous. We have a portion of Crafty Chat 
that we really like. And that is the part where you tell us some huge secret. <laughs> product that you're going to come out with. Something that makes us squeal. So do you have any secrets? Or even just a hint. Yeah. Well, let me text Jody because we work months ahead. And so I forget. I like am only focused on the month that we're working on and not anything that we've done before. Uh -huh. so I'm going to text her and ask her what a good secret is. Yes. Let's have a good secret. We like secrets. Yeah. <laughs> and we're glad you're compliant with the program. And you're oh, yeah. only telling the three of us. Yeah, <laughs> of course. No it's one. Nice you were going to ask me for some like random secret that somebody didn't know about me, and I had a great one for that. Oh, no, but, oh well, bring well, it. You have to share well, that now. Okay, this is a true story. I might be the only mohair processor you have ever met. <laughs> what? Mohair? Yes. When I was pregnant with Brianna, and I've always like wanted to work from home. That's always been like a huge passion of mine. So I tried a million, you know, you'd get like the National Enquirer and you'd look in the very back and it would have like the little tiny ad, send $40 and get this kit and then you can make a bajillion dollars at home. I never fell for the envelope stuffing, but I did fall for mohair processing. No. Which, yes, which is female goat hair. So they, and then you have to buy like all these special bins to like, rinse to wash you wash the mohair and then you rinse it and then you have to keep you have to try and keep the clumps together and you have to use a special nonsense i know and it's crazy a special non-scented detergent and all of these things so i get my mohair wait, no, wait 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 so people are mailing you dirty sheep hair yes okay <laughs> well, make sure we're on the same page yeah i hadn't considered what unprocessed mohair would be like so I get this bag of goat hair and it's filled with leaves and branches and twigs. And, I mean, <laughs> oh my gosh. I can, I can sense a stamp set in the story. <laughs> <laughs> but I am positive. I am positive this can be my way to stay at home with my daughter. How long did it last? Well, not very long. You started sneezing and it was all over. No, my our entire little apartment smelled like wet goat. All of them. Oh. I did my very best to process my batch of mohair. I sent it in, but it was rejected. Oh dear, that's so sad for you. I know. I did not keep my clumps together. Oh, Kim, yeah. this is tragic. So, is this where your love for animals comes from? <laughs> No, that has always been like just in me. Um, I can have Martin bring in some zoo animals. Um, no, I was promised zoo. animals. I'm just okay. saying that him. for the record. I would like at least one cat. <laughs> well, I got to start off with the chickens. <laughs> We've never had a chicken on Crafty Chat, y'all. Really? How many animals do you have? She's got a zoo. Okay, um, just between us, we have five dogs. We have seven cats. We have a Gloucester canary. We have two Quaker parrots, an African gray parrot, a duck, seven hens, a rat, and a bearded dragon. Don't you have a horse? We have six horses, but they don't live with us. They're boarded. So now do all of these things get along? You know, for the most part, yes. We don't have a lot of zoo drama. That's nice. I know, it's kind I, of crazy. I do like a calm zoo. Yes, and we need to have a calm zoo. When you have a zoo, it has to be calm. And Martin is generally the zookeeper. As you added some of your animals, I always wondered how you had that magical ability to make them all get along. Because you would alternate cats and dogs for a while, and they would just get assimilated into your Vander Sand and Pack very well. The cats um, especially have been easy and it generally is harder to bring in cats than dogs. Um, but my secret is six of our cats are black and one is gray. So I have decided that the cats don't know when there's another cat in because they all <laughs> look the same. <laughs> 
They're like, Tom, is that you? No. <laughs> yeah, Martin has brought in my very two favorite chickens. So I'll have them hand me one at a time. You know, all of these animals just seem like a really good setup for the book An uh, Animal Farm. Did you guys oh, have to read that in high school? Paris. Calm down, girl. This is Paris. Oh, is Paris a silky? Paris is a silky. Oh, my goodness. Isn't she cute? How old is she? She is about nine months. She just started laying eggs about three weeks ago. I can barely see her face. Yeah, we can't see her face either. <laughs> I'm like, which end is it? <laughs> <laughs> this is her head. She has a fancy hairdo. You can kind of pull it and see her eye. There. That's oh my God, that's the cutest chicken. But she feels like I, they, I mean, they don't even feel like feathers. Mm -hmm. Silky's are really, really soft. Aww. She's a sweet girl. She is. She's like a little kitty. She just, does she like to be hugged? I know some chickens like to be hugged. Yeah, she and Ginger are both like super friendly. Who Aww. knew? I know nothing about chicken except for how to eat lunch. Don't tell her. <laughs> Don't. Oh my gosh, cover yeah. up her ears. <laughs> I went through I went through a phase like where I couldn't eat chicken for a while. But now I have like compartmentalized and desensitized myself Ooh. to it or something. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna put Paris down. Oh, so the chickens fine. hang out in the house or outside? No, they have a big coop. This is ginger. Girl. Uh oh, ginger. That's the chicken I know. <laughs> Camera yeah. shy. Yeah, the one that goes kind of flappy. <laughs> yes. Well, girl, calm down. And there's our zookeeper. Oh, what she's she beautiful. Mean? Is that a Rhode Island red? Yeah. Yes. You know your chickens. I know Lydia, how do you know about chickens? Okay, I know a lot of crazy chicken ladies on Facebook. And Jeannie, <laughs> actually, Kim, Jeannie is a huge crazy chicken lady. And she has chickens not... and ducks. Yes. I thought crazy ladies were crazy cat ladies. I no, didn't know. No, chicken. Ooh. We got nothing on the chicken ladies, Jennifer. <laughs> <laughs> but they're fun. They're so oh, fun. And it's the only animal in the zoo that, that kind of carries their weight at all. I was going to say. Yeah. And we know what's in the egg because we feed them. We feed them like a nice organic feed. And... So. Well, I'm glad you don't eat your chickens. I'm huh? glad they're just yeah. your pets. Oh, yeah, no. No, as soon as something has a name, it's... I agree. <laughs> yeah. If it has a name, it's part of the one of the cats, and then you have to bring in Annie. I don't really care which cat, but... <laughs> because they all look alike, right? <laughs> Thank you, zookeeper. I want a fluffy one, Martin. <laughs> Somebody just ran in, so... <laughs> oh, it's Maddie. Okay, it. They're all black. How do you know... <gasps> Is that Maddie? Yeah. yeah. I have a black Maddie. I know. This is Matisse. Oh. She's dog-like, and a, she's just a doll. She's as great as she can. You know, it's funny, though. Even though they're all black, we can easily tell from their faces, and also each one sounds different. Everybody yeah. has a different meow, so. Okay, let's just let's tell everybody, Kim, because this is a well-established fact. Black cats are the best. Black cats are the best. Okay, thanks. And Sorry, Christina. Hey, I Ray. grew up with an all-white cat, and she was the biggest snob in the whole wide world. So <laughs> I could assume that the opposite of that would be the best. Yeah, yes. they're the best. We had an all-white cat growing up, and then I had a black and white cat, and then now I have two gray cats. So I'm just staying neutral. <laughs> no color in there. Um, yeah, black and white cats, I think, seriously, are the best. Black and white together, tuxedo cats. Silver tabbies are very close second. <laughs> They're pretty darn cute. I'm not going to lie. The cats don't, do they go outside? Do yeah. They go see the, okay. So that you, there's no issue with the chickens. Although they probably wouldn't bother the chickens. Um, Ginger's big enough that when she has been in the house, she can hold her up. Yeah. <laughs> What's the biggest cat you have? How much does your biggest cat weigh? Probably about 15 pounds. That's Hugo. Whoa. We have, okay, let's see, we have Ty, who is the one gray cat. We have Mr. Jones, who is our older guy. He lives in our bedroom. You're about to hear my Gloucester Canary Hamilton. <laughs> he makes my office sound like a rainforest. Oh, that's so sweet. <laughs> and he looks like he has a bad toupee. <laughs> he really does. So then we have 
carbon matting, Hugo, boss, and who am I forgetting? Wait, is it Hugo Boss or Hugo, yes. comma, boss? It's, well, we have Hugo and Mr. Boss. And yeah. my daughter, Brianna, has Coco and Chanel. <laughs> and Coco and Hugo are brother and sister. And Chanel and Boss are brother and sister. Oh, <laughs> cute. That's cute. And you have to meet my, my big, goofy girl, Annie. Oh, I love Annie. Jennifer is rejoicing. She's like, all is well in the world. There is a dog. <laughs> that was the most cat talk we've had on Crafty Chat. This was catty chat. <laughs> <laughs> so we need to balance with the doggy. Yes. Yeah. What a sweet dog. Annie is just a love. She is. She's a labradoodle, and she thinks that she's about five pounds. <laughs> she's and so snuggly. Yes. Oh, look at that. If she could crawl inside me, she would. <laughs> I think girl. I saw Very Foxy good. just walk behind you, Jennifer. Was that her? I think Foxy got jealous. Foxy. So there's another dog being paid attention to. Yeah. She just finished her bone, so she'll probably be over here to bug me now. <laughs> well, she is running for president. <laughs> she needs to have plenty of bones to keep her fit for office. Yes. For yeah. those of you who don't know, and I think it's just on Jennifer's personal Facebook page, she's putting up really funny photos of Foxy with different viewpoints on what Foxy will do when she's president. <laughs> Foxy has my vote, for sure. Oh, yeah. yeah. I was in at nap time. You had me at nap time. Oh, yeah. I, I got so tired of the political junk on Facebook. Oh, um, anybody will believe. And I just, so, so I decided Foxy needs to run. And, you know, her running mate was going to be a dog, but I'm thinking... To get the votes, the running mate needs to be a cat. I think you're right. I think you're right. And a black cat at that. A black cat. They would make yeah. a cute couple. Yeah. yeah. You so. could announce it on Halloween if it's a black cat. It would be amazing. And I, may I suggest, Maddie, just saying. Or we, might have, we might have to have a, a, you know, a process to decide. <laughs> because I have too many friends with cats, and they're all going to get mad at me. So I know. Well, that just shows that you have good taste, Jennifer. Yeah. Yes. Well, you know, so you, could, you could have Sophie and Daphne as running mates. They come as a package, two for one. And um, unlike some of the other cats around, they are older. They have more experience. <laughs> and they have also lived in two different parts of the country. They have lived in both the Pacific Northwest and also the Rocky Mountain West. So but they're very well versed. There's a really big problem. It okay. goes, uh, your cats go against Foxy's promise that everybody can sleep in. Oh, it's oh. true. That really well, but that doesn't knock Maddie out. Maddie loves to sleep. Splodgy would not be an appropriate vice president. Splodgy okay. does not like to sleep. Yeah, I like the, I like the, the sleeping in. Yeah, see. All right, that, that needs Sorry, to Christina. All right, sorry. You, they sorry, could guys. be like speaker of, you know, speech writer or something. We'll give them <laughs> some important role. Chief of staff. Chief of staff. I don't know. We'll come up with something. Bossy. She could get it done. <laughs> so Jody got back with me. Oh, secret time. Um, secret <laughs> time. And let's see. I'm trying to find a clever way to. We do have a set coming out in November that's one of my very favorite animals and the animal I most relate to is an animal that likes to take things very slow. They spend a lot of time hanging. Oh, I know. Sloth? Yes. Yes. Yes, we have a sloth set coming out. Oh, I actually have it. It just came in my mail and it Shut is up. amazing. Well, then you're welcome to give a small peek if you would like, since you have it there. I don't have I'm it. Just like, I own it. <laughs> She's gone. <laughs> I should have asked Jennifer. She knows what's coming out in November. So what day in November? The first. We didn't want to do election day. We figured people would be preoccupied. Okay. I don't know. People might view buying stamps as a wonderful distraction. <laughs> All of it. No, no. Ugh. Can you see? Oh, my word. It's hanging from a branch. I don't know if I've got anything else. Oh, that's my. That's not going to work. 
your bank statement. There's got to be some paper. I guess. <laughs> You're like, I don't have any paper. Here's my bank statement. <laughs> Isn't it cute? The, no, it wasn't. It was a uh, uh, school conference stuff. But see, isn't he cute? I don't want to get in trouble. No, you're not going to get in trouble, I promise. That is so adorable. Oh, there he is. Oh, there's another one. Say something, Jennifer, so it switches to you. Oh, hold on. Can you see him? Oh. What are some of the sentiments on there? Because I, I remember writing them, and I remember loving them. Thanks for hanging on to me. <laughs> you're my favorite person to hang out with. Sorry it took me so long to apologize. <laughs> oh, I like this. Am I late? Happy belated birthday. Oh. Aww. Isn't that cute? I can't wait to get that one. Lila almost stole this from me because she likes sloth. She has a sloth headband that my friend Mary Dawn made for her. So, oh. Have you seen the video of Kristen Bell when she got to see a sloth? <laughs> yes. I so want, I told Martin that is I really want to go like somewhere and visit with a sloth. I mean I know I don't you know I don't want one as a pet, but I do want to like spend an afternoon with one. Just go to it. Panama. They're all over the place in Panama. Really? really? Yep. That might be a reason to go. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> I am a sloth lover. Me That's too. a great set. Some, well, thank you. We appreciate this. Neat that was an excellent secret. Yes. Very, very good. One question I wanted to ask you, speaking of family, since you brought the menagerie, thank you, is talk about your daughter. Isn't your daughter a huge part of the business, the amazing? Yes, she runs our customer service department, and which is a tough gig. Yep. It really is. And fortunately for us, I think we probably have kinder clients, customers than than most so, and there's definitely a lot of good too. We get a lot of, of great, happy emails too. You know, she she started as one of the, you know, she and Martin were the unpaid employees uh, for a long time. And it was like, okay, well, if you want to go hang with your friends, then you can help me pack these orders. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was kind of the, the bribe, but she's kind of carved out her own place um, in the company and really likes that because it gives her her own identity and, and job apart from from me. And, you know, it, it's kind of been, it's been really cool to see as she has grown up what respect she has for companies and how this has kind of shaped her as she kind of heads into, you know, adulthood. And um, she was married in August. And so it's, it's really, and it's kind of, you know, cool to me that in some ways she kind of prefers hanging out with like me and Jody and Lena and Julie, the, you know, the mother hen club than people her age. Cause she doesn't have as much in common <laughs> with them. One of the first CHAs we did, it was the one in Orlando. Mm -hmm. She spent the night with, and Alma was down. So there was a whole slew of us in these two different townhouses and she stayed the night with us. And on the way, as when we were heading back home, she goes, Mom, your friends are really cool. Like, they're way cooler than my friends. And I said, well, yeah. Like, do you think we'd sit around and talk about knitting? I mean, <laughs> we hang out. We have fun. So, and, and it's kind of been since then she decided that, you know, that maybe us older gals have something to offer. <laughs> That's so fun. It's been fun watching her grow into that role because she's always been around. I mean, she was always there when she was little, but she really is good at what she does. She really loves it. She takes great pride in it. And, you know, it, it is, it can be a tough gig. Yeah. Especially when you really, you really want to make someone happy. And, and sometimes it just, you know, it can't happen. Yeah. It's fair, but you know, it's a tough gig. Tell her I think she's great. Thank you. I will. Is there anything else you want to say before we uh, wrap up, though, Kim? Um, just thank you. I, this has been a blast. I was, I really was like nervous <laughs> into it, but it's really been so much fun. Thank you for coming because I've I've known you for a long time, and it's been so much fun to watch how your company has grown and become so incredibly successful, and it it couldn't happen to a nicer person. So thank you for being here. Thank 
you. I feel the same way about all of you guys. It's been, I mean, just to watch all of you guys really soar in this industry has been awesome because it, it really exactly what you said. It really just couldn't happen to better people. And I was going to say, I'm just happy to get to know you because I've never had a chance to like sit and hear the story and all that. So thank you. Thank you for joining thank us. Thank you. Yes. And I'm just, I'm just going to be selfish and say, I just miss you. And I wanted to talk to you. So well, we, will, we will be there in January at CHA. Okay, good. I don't make that happen. I've made that executive decision now. Awesome. Well, I can't wait to hang out with you. I need to see my tribe. Yeah. I have to warn you, if you're coming from Florida, going into Phoenix, that'll be quite the difference. Yeah. In humidity. <laughs> Yes. Jody will be happy. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Kim. Your story is a great one. You're such a huge leader. And you you know how I feel about you. I just admire everything you've done and appreciate all the opportunities that you give everybody. So you're a big piece of the puzzle. I'm going to send you a picture later when I in my closet. I, I don't have time to go grab it real quick. But do you remember the little thing that you sent me that you made, the little plaque, and it had the bird and the bird? Yeah. yeah, I still have that. Oh my I have God. everything. I'm like crazy sentimental. Oh, that's going to make me cry. Yep. I can't cry on Crafty Chat. Here you can. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was awesome. Thank you so much. And if you ever want to come back and spill more secrets and show us more chickens, you are welcome anytime. Awesome. I will take you up on that. Okay. Take Thanks care. so much. We Thanks. will see the rest of you next time. Yes. Bye. Thank you. Bye.